This is the second in a series of videos in which I am rebuilding and repairing an ADM 3A dumb terminal. This is the chassis from it. In the first video in this series, I stripped the unit down completely, removed all the wiring, transformer, top cover, CRT and main board. And uh, as you can see, I've cleaned up the chassis. It's come up extremely nicely. Just had to do some very minor repairs, reattach a few parts that have come loose. Um, but overall it's in very good condition, no major breakages or cracks or anything and uh, I can now start to reassemble this unit. Um, I've posted a separate series of videos in which I have rewound the main transformer and uh, I've now finished um, reassembling that, I've put the screens on and this is now ready for refitting into the chassis. So what I can do now is reassemble the entire chassis uh, refit all the parts that I removed. So we've got some various bits and pieces, some uh, wiring, earth leads, that sort of thing. How can I get all these put back in and uh, clean them as I go? Um, some are a bit grubby, so I'll give those a bit of a clean and a spruce up as I proceed. And um, then the next step will be to start to refit the main board and see if we can bring this unit back to life. So I'll start by bolting in the transformer and that just basically drops into the bottom of the chassis. It was riveted in when I took it out um, but I'm going to use some uh, M5 stainless steel screws to hold it in place uh, along with some uh, large washers to spread the load on the plastic case. So I'll get that bolted in and then we'll move on to the rest of the parts. I have cleaned everything up. It all came up uh, nice and clean so this is all ready to be uh, put back together. That's the underside. I've got the transformer bolted in. You can see I've used some large washers to spread the load and uh, some low profile cap head screws. Um, they have to be low profile because this is actually the bottom foot of the uh, machine. And so if these protrude below this, they'll uh, dig into the bench. Um, I tend to fit rubber pads on these anyway. It just makes the whole thing a lot nicer. It doesn't sort of hang around on the bench as much. And I do the same thing with the front two feet as well. Okay, so I'll flip this over. So as you can see, the transformer fits back in its original location. And um, the next thing I can fit is the fuse holder. So that just goes in the rear corner from the outside. We then have the mains cable coming in through this hole and the mains switch clips into this position. So I'll get all that bolted in place and um, we'll then move on and start uh, looking at putting the main board back in. Okay, so that's all the wiring back in place. I've got the main switch fitted, all the grounds connected, the fuse holder fitted. I've replaced the fuse with a 0.4 amp fuse, which is what uh, we require for the UK version now that this has been rewound. And uh, so before we fit the main board, we'll just do a final sanity check just to make sure that everything is still behaving the way that uh, we expect it to. So I'll connect the test meter to one of our 12 volt outputs of the transformer and we'll power this up. We should get something between 13 and 14 volts. That's fine. We'll check the main switch works. That's all fine. So the next step is to drop the main board back in. I'll reconnect the uh, monitor on the bench and just to make sure it all comes back to life. And then we can start looking at the top part of the chassis and the CRT display and decide what to do with that. And that's the main board drop back into place. I've got the CRT just temporarily attached. Um, I probably didn't mention it in a previous video, but I'm sure you guessed anyway that this is upside down. It's just uh, safer running it like this with the uh, high voltage at the bottom rather than the wire being stretched all the way across. It's less likely it's going to arc onto anything and I'm less likely to stick my hand on it. So I power this up and I'll uh, dim the lights as well once it's powered up and hopefully you'll be able to see something on the screen. 
and we've got our startup beep, so that's a good sign. Let's wait for something on the CRT. Now we've got the cursor coming on. So I'll dim the lights so you can see it a bit uh, more clearly. And as I say, it is upside down, but hopefully you can see that it is working. I'll just bring the cursor a bit nearer the top. Very dirty, of course. I haven't made any attempt to clean this. There's a lot of screen burn. I'm currently looking for a replacement CRT, but this one is at least working. So we're getting fairly close to this unit being functional. The next thing to turn our attention to is the top cover. And um, I have been working on it. I've cleaned it up a bit, so we'll, I'll grab that, drop it into place on top of here, and um, we'll have a look, see how it appears. Okay, as you can see, the top cover has cleaned up quite nicely. Had to retouch some of the paint in a few areas. There is a bit of a, a ding here, which I will be leaving. I'm not going to do any filling on this. Got a bit of a scuff up here, but overall, it's in extremely good condition. No major lumps or chunks missing out of it. All fits, it's not distorted. And so the next step is to turn our attention to the uh, CRT and display see what we can do about that for now i will probably just clean it give it an adjustment there was an issue with it it was displaying uh, very bright with a dark band um, for any lines that had text on and that was just a few adjustments on the main board so i've got that done uh, and now i'll clean up the tube i'll pop it back into the case so we can have a look at it and then we'll see if this actually works so in the next video we'll get the crt refitted get the machine mostly reassembled and we'll attach it to the PC and see if the serial communications work and if it will function as a working dumb terminal. I've given the tube a really good clean, I've cleaned the board, checked all the connections, I've cleaned the connections for the edge connector. Uh, as you can see I've bolted it back in place, rerouted the cable I've now screwed the main board into place. All that's left to do really with this now is to uh, replace or restuff the main smoothing cap. Uh, I will be looking for a replacement tube for this. Um, there's a lot of screen burn on this and it's very dull. It's um, obviously had quite a lot of use. And um, I'll be also looking to fitting the option ROM for this uh, so I have the full character set. Um, other than that, this um, particular unit is pretty much done, so I'll get it closed up and we'll try and get it to talk to the PC. So that's the finished unit, it's come up extremely nicely, uh, very nice case, a bit of scuffing down here on this cover plate but not too bad, I'm going to leave that, that's part of the uh, age of the machine. Um, so that's this unit pretty much done apart from the tubes. So what I will do now is dim the lights and um, just uh, see if this will talk to the uh, PC. So I'll power it up. Make sure we get a cursor. As I say, the tube's very dim. It's uh, obviously had lots of use, so uh, it will need replacing at some point. But it's, it's come out fairly nice and clean. You can possibly see there's a lot of screen burn on here but I'll just see if I can send it some information from the PC. Okay, so as you can see, that's working fine. And um, on to the next one. If you're interested in seeing any more detail on any aspect of the repair of these, then leave a comment. I've got two or three more of these to repair and um, whether you want to see more work on the board or the transformer or whatever else then uh, please let me know.